<laughs> Praise the Lord. Right to knock our head here, a.k.a. Brother Beverly Jr. Brothers and sisters, we turn our Bibles to uh, John chapter 15, and we'll be looking at verse 9. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, to the admission, to the application, to the distribution of this great word, taken from the greatest book that man could ever possess. And my brother, this is God's word. We give God all the honor, all the glory, all the praise in the precious and the powerful and precious name of his son, our Lord, our Savior, and soon to come again, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> you know, in the upper room, when our Lord and Savior Jesus was with his disciples, and um, he said to the 11 disciples, because one of them had left at this time, um, a new commandment that I give, that you should love one another as I have loved you. And then shall men know that you are my by my disciples if you have love for one another. And then Jesus went on to say that how, how he had to go somewhere, but that they couldn't go with him, but soon after they'll follow. Peter, upon hearing that, he says, oh, hey, Lord, you know, um, wherever you go, I'll go. I'll, I'll lay down my life for you. Then the Lord Jesus then said, you'll lay down your life for me? I tell you what, uh, Peter, <laughs> uh, the, the cock is going to crow three times and you're going to... Or the cock is going to crow three times and you'll you'll deny me. You see, Peter was boasting about his love for God when he said, I'll lay down my life for you. And um, his, his love for, for the Lord. But later on in, in that um, meeting that the uh, Lord had with his disciples in the upper room, he goes on to say what we just um, saw in uh, John chapter 15, verse 9. As the Father have loved me, so I have loved you. Continue in my love. And this love that the Lord Jesus was commanding them, if you will, was not their love for him, but his love for them. You know, we are to continue in the love that God has for us. We're to continue in the love that the Lord Jesus has in us. We're not to continue in the love that we have for the Lord. Now, you might say, well, you know, the Bible says um, in, in, in Matthew chapter 22 verse 7 that we have to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. And it, you know, it does say that. As a matter of fact, the Lord Jesus says that. But just like when Peter said, I'll lay down my life for you, did he lay down his life for the Lord? As a matter of fact, if you know like what had happened, he denied the Lord Jesus three times. But even though he denied the Lord Jesus three times, he, the Lord, still loved him. He didn't love him because, you know, because of, of because he's good. He didn't even love him because he was bad. He loved him because, because that's the nature of God. That's the nature of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that we are to continue in that love, that love that's not, not, not based on who we are, what we do, what we don't do. It's based on who Jesus is. And you know, um, the disciple the, that, that, that wrote the book of John, as a matter of fact, he practiced that, that, that continuing in Christ's love for him. Where in this, um, the book, the Gospel of John, he refers to himself five times as the disciple whom Jesus loves. He wasn't concerned. He was He didn't um, call himself the the disciple who loves Jesus. He called himself the disciple who 
Jesus loves. And he did it five times. And he can and he and he practiced that. Where he also wrote five books in the Bible. So he considered himself a disciple whom Jesus loves five times. He wrote five books in the Bible, five of them. One of them being 1 John, where he said in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, herein is love. Not that we love God, but that God loves us and gave his son to be a propitiation for our sins. So he was... He, 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 he was continuing in the love that Christ had for him. By, 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 by saying that in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. And then if you jump down seven verses where he goes on to say in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, where he says, And herein is love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, that as Jesus is, so are we in this world. And then he goes on to say that there is no fear in love. For perfect love casteth out fear. For fear hath torment. And he that feareth is not made perfect in love. And that perfect love that cast out fear is the love that when you know that God loves you, when you know that Jesus Christ loves you, and it cast out fear. You know, the Apostle Paul, who was considered a, a, a preacher of the gospel of grace, who wrote more books in the Bible than any human author, where he also practiced the continuing in Christ love for him the same way that the apostle john continued in his in, in continuing in christ's love for him where we see the apostle paul in galatians chapter 2 verse 20 and 21 where he says this where he pens this great powerful truth where it says i am crucified in christ nevertheless i live yet not i christ lives in me and the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. The Son of God being Jesus Christ. I live by faith of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. So you notice he says, the, the, the Son of God who loves me. So he's continuing in the love that Christ has for him. The Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. And I do not frustrate grace of God. Because if righteousness came by the law, if righteousness came by what I do, if righteousness came by me loving God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, if righteousness came for me to, to earn this love that God, God has for me, if righteousness came that way, the Apostle Paul says, then Christ died in vain. So we see the, the Apostle Paul practicing and continuing in the love that Christ had for him. And, you know, and in the same book of Galatians, he also mentions, and this is so awesome, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, where he says, For in Christ, for in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything. So you working for it availeth anything. It doesn't avail of anything. And then he is an, and even uncircumcision. So whether you're circumcised or uncircumcised, it avails nothing. But faith worketh by love. And what's that love? When you know that Christ loves you. When you know that God loves you. And that is faith. It takes faith for you to know that God loves you. It takes faith to know that Jesus Christ loves you because that is his characteristic. That's his attribute. That's his nature. That's his personality to, to love. And, 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 when, and when we think about 
the same Apostle Paul operating and continuing in the love that Christ has for him. Just the same way that the Apostle John continued in the love that Christ had for him by calling himself the disciple whom Jesus loves. We see the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 and 19, where his, he, said, he writes that, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith and that you be rooted and grounded in this love, the love that God has for you, the love that Christ has for you, rooted and grounded in this love, and that ye may, that ye may be able to comprehend with all the saints the breadth and the depth and the length and the height of this love of Christ, that you may know that, that, that love, that, that, you, that, that love of Christ, which passive knowledge. So you, you could have your knowledge of love, but this love that God has for you, this love that Christ has for you, it surpasses it. And watch what happens when you know that God loves you, when you know that Christ loves you. Notice Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19, and it says, the love of Christ with passive knowledge, and you will be filled with all the fullness of God. When you know that Christ loves you, you will be filled with all the fullness of God. When you continue in Christ's love for you, you will be filled with all the fullness of God. You know, this so radically transformed this great man of God, the Apostle Paul, where, where he said in Romans chapter 8, verse 35, where he said, What shall separate me from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Shall distress? Shall persecution? Shall famine? Shall nakedness? Shall the peril? Shall the sword? And then he goes on to quote Psalms chapter 44, verse 11. For it is written, we shall be killed all the day long and counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, no, 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 no. For ye are all more than conquerors in God who loves us. Therefore, I am fully persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any creature shall separate me from the love of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So when you continue in this love, nothing, no circumstance, no situation, no surrounding is going to separate you from the love of God, from the love of Christ a love that he'll love you because herein lies love. Not that we love God, but that God loves us and gave his son to be a propitiation for our sin. And so my brothers and sisters, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, continue in that love, the love that Christ <laughs> has for you. Praise the Lord! May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his conscience. You. May the Lord give you his peace. And I commend you all to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up in inheritance to those who are sanctified in the precious and the powerful and priceless name of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now to him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless in the presence of his glory, both glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brothers, this is as simple as this. Continue in his love every day. Just say, thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving my sins. Thank you, Lord, for giving me eternal life. And that love will overflow. And, and it'll grow and manifest. And then you, you, you experience where all the fullness, you'll be filled with all the fullness of God. When you know that God loves you. And when you know that Christ loves you. And the Holy Spirit, where it says in Romans chapter 5, verse 5, where it says, Hope maketh not ashamed, 
that the love of God is shed abroad our heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. And what does the Holy Ghost do? What does what the Holy Spirit does? It guides you to all truth, teaches you all things, bring these things to remember, and testify of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who loves you. Who said, continue, as the Father loved me, I have loved you. Continue in that love, knowing that Christ loves you. <laughs> I better quit before I keep going on. God bless. <laughs> Agape love.